where does inspiration come from? I believe it comes from experiencing the world around you. And great inspiration can sometimes come from the most unassuming everyday places. Your morning shower, a perfect pour. The beauty of the city you've lived in your whole life. But when inspiration becomes an idea, the rush is fleeting. You only have a few seconds to put the idea to paper before it's gone. Chris, can you write something down for me? You need a machine that can keep up with the weight of your ideas. A computer with speed and strength. This is the HP NV15. This computer is an editing beast, and one of the biggest reasons why is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 GPU. NVIDIA is working with top hardware manufacturers like HP, as well as software developers such as Adobe to ensure that the laptops we use are built for creative work and the software we live in is fully GPU optimized. Now that we know what we're working with, let me show you how I built that 3D title. So first we're gonna find the point in our footage clip where the actual transition happens between the front of the laptop and the back. And this is because the 3D camera tracker can only track one clip or one perspective at a time. So we'll have to track both of these shots separately. So go to edit and then to split layer, or you can use a shortcut. I'm on a PC, so in this case I can use control shift D. So this will break our footage into two separate clips and also onto two separate layers. Next, you're gonna add the 3D camera, which will allow us to place our text. So go to effects and presets, select 3D camera tracker, and then just drag that onto your clip. So wait for it to analyze, then you're left with all these little tracking points, and when you hover between them, this frisbee looking thing, Josh, who's behind the camera, disagrees with me and says it looks like a pancake. So agree to disagree, comment below which you think it looks more like a pancake or a frisbee. And when you hover the frisbee between a set of three points, the frisbee sits at a different perspective based on those three points. So your goal is to find an angle of the frisbee that matches the perspective you're trying to achieve or track with your text. So I want my text to sit right above the laptop screen, so I'm going to choose a perspective that's actually level or flat against the screen. When you've selected your points, right click and hit create text and camera. So I'm gonna take a quick moment to change my font and the text to speed. So just click and drag the text wherever you actually want it to sit on the screen. I'm pretty happy with this placement, but if you need to change the orientation of the text, here are the tools you'll need to be able to do that. So click and drag each of these three red, green, and blue arrows, and that'll change the position of the text on each axis. So there are some more options on how to rotate the text in 3D space, and I'll get to those a little bit later when we're working on the second clip and adding text to that second clip. So if we look in our timeline, you'll notice that the 3D tracker couldn't quite track those few frames just before the zoom transition, which is fair, it happens really quickly. Before we attack those extra frames we have to deal with, I'm going to toggle on the hide warning banner so we can get rid of that ugly red banner. And I just manually eyeball these few frames just by increasing the scale a little bit and then actually moving the position of the text a bit up. So what I I feel would be accurate to what would be happening in that zoom. But again, there's only a couple frames here, so it happens so quickly, no one's really going to see it if you're doing something like that's not 100% accurate in terms of the perspective, so it can be a little forgiving when you're doing these adjustments manually. So now let's build the text for the second clip. Add the 3D camera tracker again, and for this clip under advanced, I selected typical. So when I first built this, I had a tough time with the 3D tracker and making sure that it came up with all of the tracking points that I needed. So I actually switched the solve method to typical, and that's what gave me what I needed and gave me all the tracking points that I needed. So here are all the tracking points. And by the way, over here is where you would change the size of the tracking points because sometimes they can come up pretty small and pretty 
far in the background, so if you can't see them, you can enlarge them. And as we're moving the Frisbee pancake thing around, you can see that it's we're having a tough time finding one that's actually perfectly flat with the laptop, so this was the best I could do. You can see that it's not totally flat with the perspective of the screen, but it is tracking the right object and we can adjust the perspective a little bit, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to right click, click create text and camera. And up here, you'll notice that you can change your selection tool to the rotation tool. And that's going to give you a lot more options to change the perspective of your text. And I'm not gonna go into detail about the X, Y, Z axis. Personally, I think that you have to play with this a little bit to get a sense of what each of these arrows is going to do what when you're using the selection tool or the rotation tool. So I would encourage you just to play with this yourself and you'll get a sense of how it works. Now I'm happy with the perspective of my text. Now let's change the font and we'll type the word strength and now you're good. So you'll notice that there was a little bit of glow on the text we used, so you can do that really easily. Just go over to your text layer, you're going to right click, go to effect, stylize, and then over to glow, and then you can play around with the settings to get the desired effect that you want. You'll also notice that I had a bit of a flicker when the word speed came on and first appeared on screen, so I can show you guys how I did that really quickly. So you're going to click on that text layer again, go to effects, and you're going to type in flicker exposure, drag it onto your text layer. And then in the drop down menu, I like to hit the W button just to drop down everything in a certain layer. And that's one of my favorite shortcuts to use in After Effects. So I revealed everything in the layer and I add a keyframe at the beginning to the wiggle and to correlation. So the wiggle is at 20 and the correlation's at zero. And then where you want the effect to end, you're going to bring the wiggle to zero and the correlation to 100. And that will make sure that the text fully appears at the end of the flicker effect. So now it's all white and all fully lit. Then I'm going to toggle down to the transform section down here and I'm gonna make two more keyframes. So under opacity, I'm going to, in the same spot as that first set of keyframes, I'm going to have the opacity at zero and then move over a little bit and where the keyframes end, I'm gonna bring the opacity to 100 so that the text fades on as that flicker effect comes on. And one last time, let's play the whole sequence again in full. And just remember, the most important part of this whole process is to actually take your ideas and put them into action. So no idea is too big, too crazy, ambitious, especially if you haven't done it before. So I'm encouraging you to go out today, try something new, build something new, build one of these 3D titles. You won't regret it and you'll feel so much better for learning something new. And making something awesome. So if you like this video, please consider liking it. If you're not subscribed to this channel, I would love it if you would stick around and also hit the notification bell so you get notified for my future videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.